Welcome to the KQT Health Learning Management System Lesson for Respiratory Protection Program, part of the KQT Health Infection Control Program. Please make sure your device volume is appropriate to allow you to hear the materials as they are presented. The primary objective of the Respiratory Protection Program is to protect employees from inhaling hazardous airborne substances during normal work duties. The Respiratory Protection Program is compliant with OSHA Title 29 Code of Federal Regulations Section 1910.134 and all applicable state EMS regulations and EMS protocols. The Respiratory Protection Program applies to all KQT health personnel who may be required to wear a respirator while completing their normal job duties. This course will focus on the use of an N95 respirator mask. The N95 respirator is an essential piece of personal protective equipment used to protect employees from airborne pathogens. It works by filtering out infectious particles from the air that you breathe. A pathogen is a microorganism that can cause illness in the human body. The N95 respirator can protect you from a number of airborne pathogens including tuberculosis, severe acute respiratory syndrome, also called SARS, chickenpox, measles, smallpox, and other emerging respiratory illnesses. In the event of a respiratory disease outbreak or an intentional biological agent release, EMS personnel as well as other public safety and health professionals will be on the front lines and need immediate protection to perform their essential job duties. The N95 respirator is the minimum level of respiratory protection required for response to any airborne infectious agent event. The N95 particulate respirator reduces exposure to particles in the air that are small enough to be inhaled into the lungs. Particles less than 100 microns can be inhaled through the nose and mouth of an unprotected person. Particles that are between 1 and 5 microns can enter into the upper airway of a person. Particles that are between 0.1 and 1 micron can enter into the lower airway of the human body. A micron is a unit of length equal to one millionth of a meter. The N95 respirator is designed to filter particulate matter that is larger than 0.3 microns in size. Respiratory pathogens that are capable of causing illness in the human body are divided into different categories. The sizes of the particles within the categories varies. Fungi are 2 to 200 microns in diameter. Mold spores are 1 to 70 microns in diameter. Bacteria are 0.5 to 10 microns in diameter. Viruses are 0.02 to 0.3 microns in diameter. Remember that an N95 particulate respirator is designed to filter particulate matter that is larger than 0.3 microns in diameter. An N95 respirator cannot protect someone against all viruses. There are other types of respiratory protection devices available for managing incidents involving those very small micron viruses. However, those devices and their use are beyond the scope of this lesson. The N95 series respirator is constructed to filter out with 95% efficiency non-petroleum-based particles that are larger than 0.3 microns in diameter. N95 respirators are tested and certified by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, also called NIOSH, to ensure that they meet the filtering requirements. N95 respirators belong to the class of respiratory protection called filtering face pieces. There are nine levels of filtering efficiency ranging from 95% up to 99.97%. Caution, even though they are common in the healthcare setting, a surgical mask is not a respirator. They do not provide any significant protection from inhaled airborne contaminants. A surgical mask is not approved by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health as a respirator and therefore, cannot be used as a respiratory protection device from airborne pathogens. However, a surgical mask can be placed over top of your N95 respirator mask to protect it from surface contamination caused by dirt and other large particle debris. It must be stressed that a surgical mask is not a respirator and it does not provide adequate protection from inhaled airborne pathogens. However, a surgical mask may be placed over the nose and mouth of a client patient to limit the spread of respiratory secretions during contact with the patient. The technique of placing a surgical mask over the nose and mouth of the client patient is known as source control. This helps reduce the number of airborne particles that escape from the client patient's nose and mouth while they are breathing, by trapping them on the inside, or the patient's side of the mask. However, it is still possible for very small micron particles to make it through the mask into the air you breathe. 
This is why it is important for you as a healthcare provider to wear the appropriate level of respiratory protection when you are in close proximity to a client patient during a transport. Compared to other types of respiratory protection equipment the N95 respirator has several advantages for its use, especially in the EMS and medical transport settings. They are lightweight, they are fairly comfortable to wear for long periods of time, they do not restrict your ability to move freely, they are disposable, so they do not require cleaning or other maintenance for use. They are low cost, making them a common piece of respiratory personal protective equipment. Unfortunately, even with these advantages many healthcare and EMS workers fail to wear their N95 respirator masks correctly. Worse yet, there are many providers that ignore the risks associated with inhaled airborne hazards and simply do not wear the respirator, even when required by policy. Any respiratory device can only be effective when worn and worn correctly. The N95 respirator does have a few limitations that you must consider when determining the best respiratory protection device for the specific task or purpose in which you will be using it. The N95 respirator cannot be used in oxygen-deficient environments. That is an environment with an oxygen concentration of less than 21%. An example of this type of environment includes confined spaces and below-grade passages. The N95 respirator cannot be used to protect against toxic chemical gases and vapors. Therefore, they should never be used when handling or responding to a hazardous chemical incident. The N95 respirator will not protect the wearer's skin or eyes from exposure to a droplet. The additional use of gloves, eye shields and possibly a gown should be used when managing a client patient under isolation precautions. The N95 respirator may not filter contaminants completely, in the presence of a high concentration of airborne pathogens. You should always use the exhaust systems when transporting a client patient in an ambulance. Knowing when not to use the N95 respirator is just as important to knowing when and how to properly use this respiratory protection device. Considering the limitations of the N95 respirator just discussed, it is important to understand how those limitations can affect your work-related activities. The N95 respirator does not supply air and therefore it cannot be used in confined space and structural fire events. Its use in the EMS and medical transport setting is for when you are providing medical care to a client patient in a near proximity area. The N95 respirator cannot filter chemical gas and vapors and therefore cannot be used for chemical hazard responses. It would not be appropriate to use an N95 respirator as your primary respiratory protection device when responding to a hazardous materials release incident. The N95 respirator only protects the covered areas, which are the nose and the mouth of the wearer. In the event an airborne pathogen can be spread through contact with a skin or mucous membrane you will need additional medical personal protective equipment such as goggles, gloves, and gowns. High concentrations of airborne pathogens may be present in rooms that have limited access, and that do not have a negative pressure ventilation system, which is typical for many standard patient rooms in hospitals, especially when the patient has been isolated to a closed room for an extended period of time. Make full use of exhaust systems, open doors and windows when possible before you make entry into a client patient's room whenever possible. Although not necessarily a limitation you must remember that when you are working in close proximity to an infectious or potentially infectious client patient you must wear your N95 respirator completely and correctly, the entire time you are present with them. The proper wear of any respiratory protective device is key to its successful use and protection. The primary N95 respirator used by all KQT health employees is the Aegis N95 respirator, Serial number 1669-5227. KQT Health does have several alternative N95 respirator masks available to accommodate staff with different sized faces or other conditions that could prevent proper N95 mask fitting. To adequately protect the user, the N95 respirator mask must fit properly and allow the wearer to achieve a good face to mask seal. An improperly fitted or improperly worn respirator mask provides limited protection, if any, to the user. It is your responsibility to wear the N95 respirator mask correctly, anytime you are working in near proximity to a client patient. The process for putting on your N95 respirator mask, or any other piece of personal protective equipment, is called donning. The correct method for donning the N95 respirator mask are explained in the next few slides. This process is universal and not limited to any particular brand or style of N95 respirator. 
To don the N95 respiratory mask follow these steps. Step 1. Hold the N95 respirator in your hand as shown in the image, the nose piece should be at your fingertips. Allow the headbands to hang down freely below your hands. Step 2. While holding the mask loosely in your hand, place your chin into the chin cup of the mask. Bring the nose piece up, so that the top rests on the bridge of your nose. Step 3. While still holding the mask loosely in your hand to support it against your face, pull the bottom headband over the top of your head and place it around the back of your neck. Pull the top headband to the top back part of your head, also known as the crown of your head. The headbands are not adjustable, they are one size fits all, therefore they may feel tight on some people's heads. Step 4. Push the metal nose piece inwards with your fingertips so that it conforms to the shape of your nose. The nose piece should fit snugly on the bridge of your nose. A correctly fitted respirator mask should not move from its position. With a properly sized and worn mask, you should be able to move your head from side to side and also up and down, without the respirator mask sliding about your face and creating gaps between your face and the mask itself. In order to provide the correct protection, the mask must seal to the face adequately. This is referred to as the face-to-mask seal. Step 5. Complete a seal check by cupping both hands over the mask and inhaling sharply. A negative pressure should be created, pulling the mask slightly towards your face. If the N95 respirator fails to move inward, follow these troubleshooting steps. Make sure the edge of the mask is touching bare skin. Any amount of facial hair can disrupt the face-to-mask seal and prevent the N95 respirator from working properly. Reposition the headband straps so that they pull the mask more tightly against your face. Attempt to perform the seal check again by cupping both hands over the mask and inhaling sharply. If you still cannot achieve a proper seal after making these adjustments to your mask, do not use the mask, do not enter the contaminated area. You will need to be refitted to determine the correct size and type of mask for your face shape. Remember that in order for the N95 respirator to provide adequate protection it must fit properly and allow the wearer to achieve a good face to mask seal. The process of removing medical personal protective equipment, including the N95 respirator mask is called doffing. The goal of proper doffing technique is to remove potentially soiled or otherwise contaminated personal protective equipment without cross-contaminating clean equipment, surfaces, and body parts. To remove your N95 respirator mask, follow these steps. Step 1. Hold the respirator mask in your hand, loosely as shown in the image. One at a time pull the headbands forward and over top of your head. Step 2. With the headbands now removed from around your head and neck, allow the mask to fall off of your face and into your gloved hand. Gloves are necessary during the doffing process in order to protect your hands from any contamination on the face of the mask itself. Once you have removed the N95 respirator mask from your face, place it into your storage bag, following the limited reuse guidelines or dispose of it in an appropriate waste container. Step 3. Remove any other medical personal protective equipment that you are wearing, including gloves and then conduct proper hand hygiene. Ideally, using soap and warm running water. In the absence of soap and running water, you can use an alcohol-based hand rub to temporarily disinfect your hands until you are able to properly wash them. The key for an N95 respirator mask to protect the wearer is achieving an adequate face-to-mask seal. Here are some considerations when using an N95 respirator that may help you to gain a proper fit and allow for the correct use of the device. Facial hair can prevent you from achieving a face-to-mask seal. If the mask's shape is deformed it can prevent you from achieving a face-to-mask seal. When storing an N95 mask under the limited reuse guidelines, you must be careful that the mask is not crushed, bent, or deformed in any way. If the front face of your respirator mask becomes damaged or soiled, you should replace the respirator mask. If breathing becomes difficult while wearing the respirator, you should immediately leave the area and replace the device. The face filters can be clogged over time and limit the airflow through the mask itself. If you are using the respirator mask in close proximity to a client patient with a disease that is spread through droplet contact, dispose of and replace the mask after use. During this presentation you have been told that the most important factor for the proper use of an N95 respiratory mask is the ability to achieve an adequate face-to-mask seal. The most common obstruction to achieving a good face-to-mask seal is the presence of facial hair. Anything that prevents the edge of the face mask from fitting tightly against the face, such as a beard, goatee, or long sideburns, 
may cause leakage when wearing the N95 respirator and thereby reducing the protection provided by the device. In Section 4.2 of the KQT Health Respiratory Protection Program it is written that an employee shall not have facial hair that comes between the sealing surface of the respirator and the face. If you have facial hair that prevents you from achieving an adequate face-to-mask seal, you may be deemed unqualified for some field positions. Everyone is required to complete a medical evaluation before they are able to complete the fit testing process and use a N95 respirator. The medical evaluation must then be completed annually throughout the course of your employment with KQT Health. The medical evaluation consists of a confidential respiratory questionnaire. The questionnaire is completed through your online employee portal. Once completed the questionnaire is reviewed by one of the KQT Health nurses or medical directors. After the questionnaire is reviewed a determination as to whether you can or cannot wear a N95 respirator is made. No personal medical information is shared with KQT Health Management, only a can or cannot rating is reported. If an employee is unable to wear the N95 respirator for any reason they may be deemed as unqualified for a field staff position. Every employee in a position that may require the use of respiratory protection in order to perform their normal job duties must complete the fit testing process during initial training and annually thereafter. The fit testing process is meant to ensure that you have the correct size N95 respirator and that you are able to achieve a protective seal. Remember, for the N95 respirator masks to provide adequate protection to the user, you must be able to achieve a good face to mask seal. There are two approved processes for completing fit testing. First is a qualitative test in which a confinement hood is used to expose the test subject to either a Bitrex or saccharin solution. Both of these solutions are harmless. They are only mildly irritating for testing purposes. The qualitative test relies on the test subject's ability to taste and smell the test solution. The second testing process is the quantitative test in which a port account computer is used to detect how much of the test agent is able to pass through the N95 respirator mask. Before either test can be performed the test subject must have completed the medical evaluation questionnaire and received a can wear rating. KQT Health uses the qualitative fit test method for employee fit testing. This method is also known as the hood test. The next few slides will explain the qualitative fit testing process. Step 1. Complete the medical evaluation questionnaire. The medical evaluation questionnaire will be reviewed by a KQT Health staff nurse or one of the medical directors. If there are no respiratory concerns based on the information provided on the medical evaluation questionnaire you will be directed to complete fit testing. If your medical evaluation questionnaire indicates a respiratory concern you will be contacted by the reviewer with further instructions. Step 2. Report to any base manager, training team member, clinical operations team member, risk management team member or vehicle supplies technician to complete the fit testing. The fit testing process takes less than 15 minutes. You should be able to complete fit testing before a regularly scheduled shift by arriving a few minutes early. You may also contact any of the personnel listed above and schedule a time for fit testing that works best for you. There are two parts to the physical qualitative fit test. Part 1 is sensitivity testing. During this part of the test you will wear the containment hood and be exposed to either a Bitrex or saccharin solution. The hood is placed over the test subject's head and rests on the shoulders. The hood has a large window screen that allows you to look around while wearing the hood. The Bitrex or saccharin solutions used for this part of the test are diluted versions of the testing solution. The purpose of this step is to make you aware of what taste, odor, or sensation you will be observing for when wearing the N95 respirator mask in the next step. You should not eat, drink, or smoke 15 minutes before beginning the testing process. Any substance placed in your mouth before the test may affect your ability to appropriately detect the testing solutions. For part 2 of the qualitative fit testing process you will don your N95 respirator mask and demonstrate your ability to achieve an adequate face to mask seal. Next while wearing your N95 respirator mask and the containment hood, you will be exposed to the full strength Bitrex or saccharin solution. Remember these solutions are not harmful, they are mild irritants only. During the exposure process you will be asked to perform several light exercises that include turning your head from side to side as far as possible. Tilting your head backwards, causing your chin to lift forwards, touching your chin to your chest, speaking out loud to repeat a simple phrase. And finally, you will be asked to squat down, 
to simulate picking up an object from the ground and then standing back up straight. These light exercises are designed to mimic common movements that you may perform during client-patient care. It is important that while executing these movements your face-to-mask seal is not disrupted. Adequate respiratory protection can only be achieved when the correct respirator for the specific task or purpose is used. You know and follow the correct application and removal processes. And most importantly you use the respiratory protection equipment when required. The use of the N95 respirator and other respiratory protection devices is intended to protect you from airborne pathogens that could make you sick. By following the guidance and directions in this presentation you will be better prepared to safely treat and manage the client patients that you are responsible for. Thank you for taking the time to view this KQT Health Learning Management System presentation on the Respiratory Protection Program. If you have any questions about the contents of this presentation please contact a member of the Risk Management and Safety Team. Please complete the associated quiz for this lesson in your Learning Management System Employee Portal.